Welcome to Byproduct Live, where we unbox everything SaaS and product. We talk with experts and leaders in SaaS and product to understand their approach to leadership and ways of working to share their knowledge and understanding. Byproduct Live is brought to you in partnership with AmSource. AmSource are a specialist talent solutions business to start up and scaling tech businesses globally. I'm delighted to be joined by the queen of product ops, super active Berlin community supporter and the owner of the best video background on the web, it's Antonia Landy. A lot of people will have seen Antonia across socials, particularly LinkedIn, promoting product ops and talking at all manner of conferences across Europe. However, we're not talking to Antonia about product ops today. We're talking to her about the power of community in the product and the tech world. This is something both she and I are very passionate about. Antonia has been a member of our byproduct community pretty much since we started and has been a really great supporter. She's also active in a number of other product communities and tech communities in Berlin and beyond. Welcome to the podcast today, Antonia. How are you? I am great. Thank you so much for having me and for the no lovely problem. intro. <laughs> uh, no problem. No problem. So let's dive straight into things. And um, there's lots of kind of online communities, but why do you think they're important and why are they important to you? Yeah. So I think I always really grew in communities. Um, it wasn't very long after I came to Berlin. I was working in quality assurance at the time and I was working in startups which most often meant I was the only QA person in that startup <laughs> yeah. and finding places where I could, you know, commiserate with others <laughs> or make sure I was really on the right track or actually get tips on how to improve what I was doing yeah. um, became so important so early on. And I've really taken this throughout every job I've had. Yeah. And um, I guess a good starting point then is, is how did you get involved in these communities? Because there's so many around and I guess different personalities of people will find it um, easier or harder to get involved. So what, what approach did you take? Um, so I think for me, things usually start online um, and yep. then I supplement that with things that are in person. What I like about online communities, I mean, it's I think on the overall, it's harder to have a really good and thriving online community. Yeah. Um, there's a lot more moderation. You need to do a lot more to make sure that people actually actively, you know, participate, engage, especially in the beginnings of a community. But I think my default has always been, you know, let's check out the space online first and then yeah. let's see what it's like in person. Yeah, I think it feels a little bit safer, doesn't it, to check it out online. Right. You don't have to get so involved, but actually to get the most out of a community. And I think this is the same for, for anything generally. It's much better to be obviously face to face. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I think um, certainly with Byproduct, we've obviously done a combination of online um, events. We've done some face to face events and obviously now doing the um, the podcast, which we're sharing with the community and, and beyond. Um Obviously, a little while ago, you took the decision to move into the freelance world. Right. Um, and um, a big decision for anybody. But I think um, when we talk about communities and events, I, I would think that they've had a real benefit for you as a freelancer. Yeah, absolutely. And it's so funny, like, even even before I became a freelancer, you know, people people would be almost fascinated with my incessant attending of <laughs> events etc and they really say like oh i could never do that you know I'm, I'm just not good at networking and it's funny because i never really think of these things as networking i don't think of these things yeah. even posting on linkedin i don't think of it as building my brand or having a content strategy like i genuinely just do it because i enjoy it or because i feel like i have something I want to say or I have yeah. to say and then everything else rolls from there but sure I mean my first clients came from my network that's yeah. it definitely has been powerful in that way yeah yeah and I think one thing we definitely see on LinkedIn is I think people think about things too much um, yeah. <laughs> and actually um, when we're posting on LinkedIn within four hours 
um, it can be disappeared and gone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but also, I think there's too many people preaching on LinkedIn about things like content strategy and mm. um, you've got to do X, Y and Z, whereas mm. actually it's about being genuine and about yeah. being consistent and then also then finding those genuine people as well. Right. And um, I think it's probably a, a, about authenticity online. And certainly um, I know when I post, I, I don't. Do I have a content strategy? Well, I think about what days it's going out, but I just try and be as authentic <laughs> yeah. as possible and hope that people enjoy it, which um, I think if you do that, then organically people are, are going to like what you're saying. And I think that's definitely happened with you because I'm assuming you're seeing things like comments going up and you wouldn't be getting invited to these conferences, right? If, <laughs> right. if you weren't saying something that people wanted wanted to hear because going from a post online to getting to ask to speak to hundreds of people is, is, a, is a big step up. And how, how did you find that, that transition? I know we spoke in the summer and you, you were quite busy with conferences. How, right. how did you find that transition to um, being behind the screen, to being up on stage and talking to people? Um, I love it. Like, it's yeah. just, it's just what I love, but amplified, right? Like I get to speak to hundreds of people instead of, you know, the 50 odds that are in a meetup or in an, yeah. in an online round. So I, I take it with a lot of responsibility as well. Yeah. Like I really do want to make sure that what I talk about is useful, right? That people can get actionable things out of there that they can really do tomorrow. Right. Cause I think, and this is another thing where I feel like communities thrive so much as opposed to things like people preaching on LinkedIn or yeah. product management books, right? Because there is always like, that's, that's almost like that's utopia, right? It's, yeah. it's something really aspirational and we need that. We, we want to know what ideal looks like, but I think we need to be very honest about the fact that most of us don't live in ideal, right? No, but of course. we still need to get stuff done and we still want to get better within that environment. So having that space in communities to go, I'm really struggling with this, or yep. this is not what my company looks like at all. Yep. How do I proceed? Yep. I feel like that's so powerful. Yeah, and I think certainly from the events we've hosted and where I've attended, I think one of the big things about whether it's online or in person is mm. you often hear about things that have gone wrong. <laughs> yeah. Um, which people are reluctant to do in when they're, you know, they're sharing that utopian viewpoint, but For actually sure. when you're, you're chatting at events or people are giving talks, then like you say, you hear about real world and um, yeah, when things go wrong, I think that's when you do learn more. Um, if Definitely. everything was perfect, <laughs> then um, you're not really learning actually. And, and, you know, I guess there's no place like in product and when you're building software mm. products, things do go wrong regularly. And whether mm. that's to do with the tech, whether it's to do with approach and leadership. And I think that's what's certainly one of the big things, events that I've seen. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. And um, I, I guess we've, we've talked a little bit about it, but just in terms of how you've contributed, because you obviously didn't go from a LinkedIn post to um, <laughs> speaking to some of the biggest conferences in Europe. So what, how else have you contributed to some of the events that you've attended? And just to give people an idea of, of perhaps how, if they go from attending to contributing, how people can do that. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, you know, I, I never did things with the view of like, oh, this is going to get me in somewhere or like I, oh, if I do this now, I'll be rewarded later. Right. And I think this is also something, a slight misconception with networking, um, where it's, you're not doing it for an end goal. Like it is the, it is the goal, like meeting people yeah. and exchanging is the goal. And then if at the end of it, somebody remembers you for something you said or something you did, like that's a great bonus. But yeah. for me, I, I do some volunteering, right? Like I, I volunteered at, um, it used to be mind the product engage, right? So yeah. it's product at heart now. So that was two years ago, right? I was there as a volunteer. Um, I just like helping out. Like if I see somebody that is trying to build something and maybe I have a little bit more expertise or they need an extra pair of hands, I'll just put myself forward because I yeah. genuinely love 
like fostering these moments within yeah. within the community. So that is that is the easiest way, right, to get involved. Just put your hand up or even ask an organizer if they need an extra pair of hands. Um, yeah. It's usually very much appreciated. Yeah, yeah, ab absolutely. And I think what's important if people are listening and thinking, oh, I, I can't go to a, a face to face event is there's obviously generally a lot of people there. So yeah. if you do just want to go to one or two and check it out. And I think that's the same for everybody. There's a natural mm -hmm. nervousness of going mm -hmm. into a room where you might not know anybody. Yeah. Um, but you, you can for the first one or two is obviously just just kind of blend in and, and take it all for in. Sure. But actually, one of the things that I've found, and I think in product in particular, because um, probably a bit more sociable than perhaps some of the <laughs> disciplines in, in, in tech, um, but product people generally will welcome other product people. It's very open. 100%. Um, yeah. and, and people will have open conversations, which is one of the things we've always found with, with our events. Um, and in terms of some of the community, obviously, by product, we um, support the product community. What, what other communities are out there that if people are listening or, or viewing, um, and I guess particularly the kind of Berlin area in Germany, what other product communities have you contributed to and been part of? Um, myself, um, I've contributed to a fairly new group called Berlin Product Managers. Um, they're yep. all the rage in Berlin at yep. the moment. Yeah, yeah, I've um, seen their events. They look great. Yeah, absolutely. I, of course, also have my own meetup around product operations. Um, no way. Product yeah. operations. <laughs> yeah, it's called Pops Berlin. Pops and, Berlin, um, yeah. We have bi-monthly events. Um, we just had one uh, last week, actually, which yeah. was wonderful. So it's really, you don't have to be in product operations um, to join us, obviously, yeah. but we're likely to talk about more you know, organizational topics. The the one last week was about how to affect meaningful change in a company, okay. how transformation works. Um, so yeah, there's definitely lots of events. There's event groups that come and go, right? There are some that stay the same. Um, obviously, we've got Product Tank in Berlin, which is always yep. a very engaging, high quality event as well. But more and more online spaces, and I think more spaces actually utilizing WhatsApp, which I, in the beginning, was very skeptical about. Yeah. But I'm actually really enjoying it, I have to say. Yeah, yeah. I think, obviously, our, our community is on WhatsApp, and we, we transitioned from from Slack. But it, yeah. Um, yeah, it was a bit of a challenge in the early days, as you say. But actually, <laughs> um, I think because everybody has WhatsApp pretty yeah, much, right. then, that their community's feature does make it a little bit easier. So, mm. um, yeah, it's good. And everybody's always got their phone with them. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it means that they can consume when they want to. Exactly. Um, yeah, so cool. Well, look, let's start and wrap the conversation up um, today. We've always taken a whistle-stop tour and... Um, I, I think there's probably three kind of key takeaways for us to take from this conversation. One is um, that communities are really great for building um, your network, but actually without pressure. So you can yeah. just go along and hang out um, and take it from there. Um, if you do want to raise your own profile, it's a great platform to be able to do that. Um, so whether you're looking for work, if you're looking to hire, yeah. Importantly, if you're looking to learn, if you're wanting to launch a freelance career or change career, then um, it offers benefits across those. Um, but I think the, probably the most important thing is you, you kind of need to start yesterday or start now um, <laughs> and don't put it off. Um, and I think um, try not to be a wallflower. So if you do go, maybe hide in the background for one or two, but definitely contribute, ask questions and use other people's knowledge to, to get the most out of it. And I think the important thing is about self-development. So mm. it doesn't matter what stage you're at in your career, um, whether you are um, a recent graduate and you're just starting out, whether you're a CPO. I think one thing I've realized with events is um, and communities is that everybody can benefit. I think yeah. you would probably agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. And also yeah. just have fun, right? You're yes. there to meet people. You're there to have a good time. So don't put yeah. too much pressure on yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and importantly, most face to faces they do have beer and pizza. So um, <laughs> even if you don't like the people that are there, you can have fun while you're there as well. So um, yeah, cool, brilliant. Well, thank you very much for your your time today, Antonio. I know you're you're super busy, and we really appreciate you stopping by with us. And we'll catch up with you soon.
Excellent. Thank you for having me. Brilliant. Cool.